Hey guys, coming to you live from my uh, little workshop here in my garage. Chapter 7, The Wendy Bird. This is a long chapter, so we're going to read part of it now, and we'll read part of it later. Unaware that the pirates had found their hiding place, the boys waited for a while, and then emerged from the underground cave. Suddenly, Nib saw something in the sky. Look at that white bird, he said. It sounds as if it's saying poor Wendy. It must be a Wendy bird. It wasn't, a, it wasn't actually a bird that Nib saw at all but poor Wendy herself flying up above. Now the boys heard another sound. It was the voice of Tinkerbell, shrill and jealous. She was no longer pretending to be nice to Wendy, but she was pinching her and trying to make her fall. Peter wants you to shoot this white bird, Tink called to the boys. Quick, the boys called, bows and arrows. Sue was excitedly fitted an arrow in his bow. Get out of the way, Tink, he shouted. He fired and Wendy fluttered to the ground with an arrow in her shoulder. I shot the Wendy bird, Toodles bragged. Peter will be so proud of me. Silly donkey, Tink Tinkerbell cried, laughing at her trick before going to hide. She knew she would be in trouble for urging poor Tootles to shoot at Wendy. Slightly frowned, slightly frowned as he looked at Wendy. That's no bird, he said. I think it's a lady. A lady, Tootles, Tootles replied nervously. Peter was bringing a lady to take care of us, and you've gone and shot her, Curly said. Tootles looked, took a deep breath. I did it. I shot the Wendy lady, he said quietly, and he turned to leave the group. Just then, the boys heard the crowning, crowning sound up above. It was Peter's signal. He was back. They gathered around Wendy so that Peter would not see her. He dropped to the ground in front of them, but no one said a word. Why so quiet, boys? Peter asked, but still none of the boys spoke. Never mind, Peter said. I have news for you. I've brought you back a mother. You may even have seen her already. I think she's flying this way. Toodles cleared his throat. Boys, he said, bravely, step aside. The boys obeyed, revealing Wendy's body. Peter bent, took the arrow from Wendy's shoulder, and turned to her fa turned his face to the boys. Whose arrow is this, he asked sternly. Mine, Peter, Tootles replied. Angrily, Peter raised the arrow, prepared to strike Tootles with it, but he could not do it. At just that moment, Nib saw Wendy move. The Wendy lady, he cried. She moved. Her arm! Peter bent over bent over Wendy again and saw an acorn that he had given to her that he had given to her when she first asked for a kiss. It was on a string around her neck. The arrow had hit the acorn and saved her life. Hurry up and get better, he said, so I can introduce you to the boys and the mermaids. From the hiding spot above, Tink sighed loudly. Listen to Tink crying because the Wendy lady is alive, Curly said. The boys told Peter about her crime. We are not friends anymore, Tink, Peter cried. Go away and never come back. the chapter later what's gonna happen to poor Tinkerbell and I hope Wendy's okay